When I first decided to make this video, I wasn't sure how to do it. At first, I tried my usual method. I made a list of bullet points with the rough ideas of what I wanted to say, and then I would sit in front of a camera and improvise the rest. Of course, I couldn't make a video about nature without showing some of it, so I went out to collect B-roll. B-roll is footage that does not form the main part of the film, but is used to give extra information. For example, if you are watching a documentary and someone is talking about apples, and then the video changes to show some footage of apples, that is B-roll. So I went to my local wooded area, to the beach in Bude, a seaside town near where I live, as well as the marshes that are next to it. However, as I collected more footage, the act of immersing myself in nature changed what I had planned for the video. It felt unnatural to talk about my feelings completely disconnected from the footage I was showing. I kept putting off writing the script because I couldn't quite figure out how it was going to work. So I'm making this video in a very different way to my usual method. I'm writing the script as I edit the footage together. It feels a bit like making a collage or spreading my leaves like a tree. One thing that became immediately clear was that we were in the middle of a transitional period. Autumn was coming. I went out to film in the early morning and I was met with a sudden drop in temperature as well as breathtaking scenes of fog and mist snaking through the trees. There is a viaduct near my house which leads to a wooded area where there used to be train tracks and the mist gave it the appearance of a magic portal, a door to another world. Looking out on the mist, I was reminded of the painting Wanderer Above the Sea of Fog. Although that painting evokes a sense of adventure and mystery within me, whereas when I looked out at the familiar landscapes around my home, I felt only peace. Moving into the trees, I saw the familiar sights. The jungle-like ferns, the wooden gates, the weird sign that was planted in the middle of the path. But I also found some new things. A birdhouse hidden away on a tree, a feather dropped by a bird, and best of all, blackberries. If you don't have blackberries where you live, I'm terribly sorry, because there's nothing lovelier than passing a blackberry bush when they're in season and stopping to pick some. Blackberry bushes often grow by the sides of paths and roads in the UK, making them a great snack to pick while going for a walk. Looking through the lens of the camera, I was forced to think about the viaduct differently. What I had once considered a fairly boring area, given how narrow the tree cover is, now appeared to me full of life. We often talk about how technology separates us from nature, but it also has the potential to bring us much closer, to connect us with the natural world. After all, binoculars are a piece of quite advanced technology, but their most popular use is watching birds, something we hardly associate with badly behaved teenagers addicted to their smartphones. The next day, I went to the sea. Bude has one of those beaches that's vastly different at high and low tide. As you can see here, at low tide, the beach stretches out forever. But at high tide, all those boats which are sitting on dry sand now will be floating in the water. When I started recording footage, I intended to keep people out of it as much as possible. After all, this was a video about nature. I was also going to focus on plants and wildlife, since they are the most alive forms of nature. But through the process of wandering about and framing shots, I soon realised that this made no sense. 
there is no strong dividing line between the natural and the unnatural. Humans are not outside of nature, we are a part of it, and so it made sense to include people, and their dogs, in my footage. And equally, how can I say that a cliff or rock formation is less alive than a bird or a tree? They may move and change more slowly, but they weren't made by human hands either. Besides, human influence on nature is apparent wherever you go. So I learned to stop worrying about whether I was capturing true nature and to just enjoy what I was seeing and feeling. What I love about the beach is just how many faces it has. When the tide is low, the sun reflects off the sand in a beautiful way. Well, unless you try and make a sandcastle out of it. The rock formations here are so varied and dramatic, and it's never difficult to find some peace and solitude among them. Whenever the sun escapes from behind a cloud, a whole world of colours comes to life. And the cliffs have so much to offer, like these beautiful striations, or this bench which provides amazing views of the sea. I also came to the beach on another day, much later, when it was high tide, and the difference was staggering. Here you can see people peacefully surfing at low tide, versus the wild, windy adventure of high tide. And here you can see the sea pool, which uses water from the sea, at low tide, but at high tide the water's right up to the edge. A bit further inland in Bude, there is a nature reserve made up of marshes. It's a very nice place to walk and you can see many different kinds of wildlife. Unfortunately, I think I came at a time when there aren't many birds about, or I just wasn't patient enough to see them. Still, I came just after having a very painful dentist appointment, and I found the sight of the breeze moving through the plants very calming. Despite a group of noisy schoolchildren all learning to kayak on the river, the local ducks and swans were not deterred. In fact, I was able to get up very close to the swans and watch them feeding. I even caught a moment when a dog walked a bit too close and the swans hissed at it. <laughs> as beautiful as they look, they are not friendly animals. I also found the usual staples of British wildlife, cows and sheep. You're never too far from these animals in the British countryside, in my experience. One of the cows was really quite curious about my camera equipment, and I'd like to say we made friends, but all she wanted was a look. The moment I tried to pet her, she moved away. And of course, there were some universals across the different places I visited. One thing I really came to appreciate while waiting for my camera to record was running water. It sounds so simple, but I got lost in watching streams, rivers, and of course, the sea itself. And it begs the question, how do you define a river? The water is always moving, so with each passing moment, the river will quite literally never be the same again. Finally, birds abounded. It's easy to forget about them, but pretty much everywhere you go outside, you can always hear at least one bird. Although I wasn't able to capture many of them on camera, they were just too small and fast, I still ended up with plenty of shots of them. I struggle to name the majority of birds I see, but for now, just recognising the different types, seeing how they move, hearing how they sing, is enough. In the end, I went off to make a video about my relationship with nature, which I thought I already understood. But in the process of making it, the relationship deepened. I learned to look closer, to listen more, to appreciate the subtleties of the natural world. There are things I appreciate now that I didn't care for before. I like seeing slugs on the path after a rainstorm. I let bugs and spiders crawl on me where before I would have thrown them off. I actually enjoy going out for early morning walks, even when it's cold and wet, 
because I get to see a different side of things, to feel the same feelings that humans felt hundreds of thousands and millions of years ago. Originally, I also wanted to talk about my relationship with God, which is closely tied to nature. I grew up religious, but have been an atheist for most of my life. However, in the past year, I've come back to God, especially in times of need. But I don't feel the need to define my relationship to him. I think it is evident enough in the beauty of nature. And hopefully, through this video, I have transmitted the feeling of divinity that I get from the outside world, from his creation. If you're not in the habit of it, I invite you to go and spend some time with the wildlife near you. Leave your phone at home and just sit for a while. You don't have to be religious at all to appreciate the peace of the wind, the water, the sky, the birds and the trees. Thank you for watching.